Hello guys, so so far we've looked at the interaction of two activities within one application, within our application Droid 101, and that was using explicit intents. We're going to look at implicit intents, intents and they are used when you want to interact between different applications. So using an implicit intent you can open up the activities from one app to another I think it's easier if I show you what I mean let's open up the browser say you're on the internet and you find an amazing website and uh, I found a website today I think you'll like it clientuser.net it's got some really good tutorial material on there it's an example of a fantastic website that you might want to share with your friends. So you'd usually go up to your browser's menu and then hit share page. Now that's an action. So an action is broadcasted into the Android operating system and it says, I want to share this. An Android does something called intent resolution. It tries to find any other applications that are waving a flag in there that say yes I can handle that action so this sharing intent this action has been picked up by the only other the only app currently on this emulator that is there to share the messaging app but let's enable our current app to accept these implicit intents let's exit this messaging app if you open up your application manifest you might have noticed that our activity declaration here is a bit empty and you can see that uh, the main activity has a few other bits of information it's the intent filter this is the uh, fil this is the flag this is the flag that this application will wave to say hey i can handle this action so an intent a implicit intent doesn't directly call an application it just says hey anybody out there can you take on this action so let's imitate a sharing application. Let's create an intent filter. There are many, many actions, and I'll just show you a list of them. If you look at the developer resources, you can see that there's a whole load of standard Android intents. And depending on what your app is going to do, you should have a look at what these are all doing. The one that we can use for sharing things happens to be called action send. So we can type in action Android and let's take advantage of the autocomplete. Uh, send. And when you're creating an implicit intent, you always have to set the category as default. Where is it? Uh, default. You have to stick to the naming conventions. So when you're accessing these activity calls, you always have to state Android intent action and then name the action. And the same with the category, Android intent category, name the category. If you don't use this full string, when another application broadcasts and says, hey, is there anybody out there that can handle the send action? Your app isn't going to reply. There is one more thing that the intent resolution looks for as well as the action it wants to know if you can handle the data it wants to give you we want to take on some text data so you'd say data android then miami type text plane and we're ready our application is ready to compete for the attention of the user on the sharing event. Let's hit save. Let's highlight the app and hit run. 
use the existing emulator. Let's take a look at what happens when we try to share the website from the browser. Here we are at the website and as before we hit menu share page and you can see what's happened. Our little app is now competing with all the other applications out there and it's given the Android OS a choice before it went straight into the messaging app. Now we can click on our app and use it to share the message. But uh, if we did that, it wouldn't do anything because we haven't put any code in to handle it. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial.